Hey everyone and welcome back to part two of our three-part how-to series on using Monsoon's mandrel and measuring kits, uh, all part of Monsoon's hardline series of pro bending toolkits. In the first installment of this how-to video we showed you how to measure from your GPU block to your chipset block, uh, take those dimensions and transfer them to your building board, install your 90 degree bending mandrel and make this part. Uh, before we start on the second leg of this, which is going to be going from our chipset block to our CPU block, I wanted to cover two things that I neglected to mention in the first installment. Uh, the first is that when you're using the measuring kit and you're installing it, your wing nut and your wing bolt, you should also include these little flat metal washers. They're uh, real basic number 10 flat metal washers. Uh, what those do is keep the wing nut from getting down into the groove that's in the rulers and spreading it apart. It just makes them much easier to loosen and adjust. Um, I forgot to mention those in the first video, which I apologize for. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention was that typically when I'm doing my dimensions, if you're specifically if you're a new user, but even if you've done this for a while, you've kind of learned this on your own. Uh, if my dimension is uh, 144 millimeters and 116 millimeters. I like to add two or three extra millimeters to the end of that. Um, the reason I do that is because uh, cutting it is a lot easier than rebending a new piece of tube. So if you end up, it's just like any other building project, if you end up being short, um, you're kind of screwed because you can't make the tube any longer. Whereas if you take your piece of tube that you've just bent and cut and go over to your build and put it inside and it's two millimeters too long, it's no big deal to come back. It's about a minute and a half to come back and cut off a couple of millimeters. So call that uh, a, a tip or trick, I guess. Um, again, it's better to have a board or have a, a part that's a millimeter or two too long than one that's a millimeter or two too short. Uh, after you've done a couple and you've gotten more comfortable with it, then you can start, you know, if you feel comfortable going with the exact dimension, you can do that. Uh, all right, we're gonna go over to our little mock case and get some dimensions for the next tube run. All right, I don't know if you remember from our first part, but this is our little mock uh, computer case that we've set up. Uh, GPU block, a chipset block, and a CPU block, just to simulate sort of a basic configuration you might come across in your system. In the first part, we ran from the port in our GPU block to the first port in a chipset. Now we're going to go from this second port in our chipset over to the first port in our CPU block. I've already gone ahead and set up my measure kit to go from the center of this fitting to the center of this fitting. And if you can see that, I then went ahead and used my acrylic triangle to, or right angle to make sure that I'm square, which I am on that leg, and I'm square on this leg, which I am. And just one more time double check that I'm from the center to the center. I'm actually a little bit short. I think I could go another millimeter down on that one. So just gonna loosen this up. Maybe a little more. Slide myself down a millimeter right there. Tighten it back down, not too tight. We don't want to break anything. Confirm that I'm square, which I'm not quite. And I like the way that looks. Double check my dimensions again. Now I'm dead center of that fitting to dead center in that fitting. I like the way that looks. Next up we're going to be back at our building board. All right, we've back at our building board. We've got our dimensions. A um, couple things you might notice here, real quick. For the other leg of this, I actually took two of the smaller rules and used a screw and a, or a wing nut washer and wing bolt to hold them together. Uh, the reason I've done this is you can take <clears throat> a lot of times in your case you're going to be working in fairly tight confides, and you'll find that a lot of times say the 300 millimeter rule is just a, you know 30 or 40 millimeters too long and the 200 is just 30 or 40 millimeters too short 
So the reason we made these just at 100 millimeters is so that you can use them in any combination you need to get the exact length you need as opposed to having to find yourself in a situation where the only solution is to take one of the longer rulers and break a piece off because obviously we'd like to avoid that if at all possible. So you can, uh, like you see here, I've combined two of the shorter rulers to make a different length. Uh, you could just as easily add that to the 200 millimeter roll or the 300 or do any combination you need to to get just the length you need so you don't find yourself having to break off one of the rulers. Uh, again, in the first video I forgot to mention the flat metal washers. These are just basic number 10 washers. They keep the wing nuts from going down inside the slots and they make it much easier to tighten and adjust the rules. Um, before we get into our dimensions here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and reuse some of this because I've already got this mounted and I've got my lines in place. So to speed us up, we're just going to erase the lines we use to determine the length of the arms. All right. Now because we started over a little bit, uh, we didn't start exactly from the zero side, we started from the 60. Uh, I can look at this and see that my dimension over here is 229 degrees. So I'm going to do just like we did in the original. I'm going to um, make a little sketch here that's just basically what we're going to be doing. And then I can transfer my dimensions over. So I know that the uh, Large dimension is 229, just a real simple arithmetic here, and 60. So I'll subtract that and I'm going to get 169. So that's the long arm. And then I can look at this and see that I'm at 116 millimeters for the long arm on the side. And then because we've combined the rulers here, as I mentioned, you're going to have to maybe do a typical little bit of math to add or subtract. but um, it's 106. So those are my dimensions. Now that I have those, I don't need to keep these together so I can take it apart to get one of my long rules to make any lines I need to on my building board. Set these aside. All right, we're going to start with our 169. Those are out of my line over here. Try not to lean over in front of the camera. Oops, got it backwards. 169, starting from the zero side. And I'm going to make a mark at 169. Going to take my right angle that comes with the kit. I hate to try and lean over in front of the camera here, but. And I can just extend that line down as far as I need to. Alright, we know that that dimension is 116. I'm going to get one of these little rules so I don't have to keep leaning in front of the camera and blocking your view. that right there. All right, we know our dimension is 116 millimeters. 110, 11, or 1, 2, 3, 4. It's right there. That gives us that leg, and we know the short leg is 106. Do the same thing again. Looks like we already had a mark there. I could have just left that mark, I guess. And again, I just added a couple of extra millimeters there to give myself some leeway in case I miss on any of those dimensions. All right, what we've got here again is our center lines. Uh, remember these 
mandrels actually work with center line, so we don't have to do any of the calculations left edge to right edge or top to bottom. We don't have to do any of the K factors or any of that stuff because we're using the center lines that are built right into the mandrels like we discussed in the first part. What I'm going to do next is um, add this 180 degree mandrel, and even though we're bending a 90 because we've got the other mandrel in place, as I start my bend around, this mandrel is going to stop the bend from going any further. You'll see that, uh, what I mean, in a little bit when we are actually bending our part. Alrighty. And I'm in place. I'm going to do just like we did before with the cordless screwdriver. Again, if you don't have a cordless screwdriver, you can use a regular screwdriver. Just Just use a regular screwdriver, put it in the screw, give it a few taps with a shoe or a hammer or something, and then you can start the screw in. Like I mentioned before, because we have both of our cutoff legs, lengths, and then our 90 over here, which we're going to be bending, we can again check and see if we've got a piece of scrap tube that's long enough, just like we did before, by kind of walking it around. Looks like I shoved my whole building board there, sorry. Walking it around. And you can tell we're going to come up short, so we're going to need a longer piece of tube. But again, this will help you um, very easily get the dimensions that you need. Uh, I'm going to go bend one of these pieces, and I'll come back and show you where we go from there. All right, we got our first <clears throat> bend done. You can kind of see what's going to come next. Because we're using the first 90 degree mandrel, when we line up on the 80 degree and make our next bend, all we have to have is the out leg right here, uh, which is what I'm going to do next. Coming right up. All right, we've got our second bend in place, nice and flat. I don't know if it'll show, but we're right on our center lines. <clears throat> The next step is to put a little tape around the end here. I use the tape for several reasons. Uh, one, it makes a nice easy mark to see with a pencil. The other thing is it lets you, when you're doing your cut in your miter box, um, miter boxes, and actually this is the other size, but um, it allows you to more easily Put your mark on. For cutting, and when you're cutting, it tends to keep the end of the tube or the edge of the tube from splintering. All right, I'll be back in a minute after I've made this cut. And there we are with the second tube installed. Excuse the <clears throat> strange camera angle, but it's kind of hard to get it lined up so you can see everything. Um, on the third and final part of this video, we're going to actually go from the second port on the GPU block to the second port on the CPU block. We're going to come straight out along the x-axis, hang a 90 on the y-axis, and then do a z straight down 90 to the other block. So we're still going to have two 90 degree bends, but we're going to have the second bend be on the third axis. Uh, what that's going to let you do is see have a little 90 degree brackets and the measuring kit work to allow you to get dimensions in all three axes. Uh, stay tuned for the third part. I uh, don't know if I'll get it out before Christmas, but I'll certainly do it right directly after Christmas.